Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. In organic chemistry, substitution reactions have great significance. Today we learned there are two types of substitution reactions, SN2 and SN1. Most of the reaction in organic chemistry occur between a nucleophile and an electrophile. A nucleophile is a compound that is electron rich or have higher electron density or negatively charged. On the other hand, an electrophile is a compound either positively charged or has a low electron density region. In a substitution reaction, nucleophile is attacking an electrophile. That's why it is called SN reaction. Now why 1 and 2? Well, to know that, we have to go through the mechanism. The nucleophile on the left hand side is attacking the electrophilic carbon, which is attached to a leaving group. Leaving group is any group that is willing to be kicked off. Usually, leaving group is electronegative, which is why the carbon is electrophilic. Look at the reaction again. Two arrows are drawn, one from the lone pair of the nucleophile and another from the bond between the carbon and the leaving group to form a lone pair on the leaving group. And if you're interested in stereochemistry here, SN2 undergoes inversion configuration. That means the shape of the stereocenter of the compound gets inverted. In SN2 reaction, the nucleophile attacks the electrophile and the leaving group lives in a single step. And if we take into account the nucleophilicity of the nucleophilic substitution reaction, that means how fast the reaction happens, or in short, reaction kinetics, depends on how fast the nucleophile finds the electrophile. In SN2 reaction, the rate depends on the concentration of the nucleophile and electrophile. Thus, it is bimolecular and it explains the simple 2 of SN2. Look at the following reaction mechanism for SN1. Here two steps are involved. Leaving group is leaving by itself in the first step, and in the second step, nucleophile is attacking the positive carbon atom, which is called carbocation, to form a bond. The existence of carbocation is the only key moment in SN1 reaction. And if you're interested in stereochemistry, it forms product by racemization, which means it has the probability of forming products of both configuration due to the carbocation's trigonal planar shape because of sp2 hybridization. SN1 only depends on the existence of the carbocation, and that forms in the first step out of its two steps. The second step is very fast and thus irrelevant. So the first step determines its reaction rate and explains the one of SN1. There are four factors of determining if the reaction will go by SN2 or SN1. Our first factor is electrophile. If there are more R groups, also known as alkyl groups, with a carbon atom, nucleophile can't attack to have a SN2 reaction. So tertiary or 3 degree substitute doesn't favor SN2. But as alkyl groups are electron donating, more alkyl groups can stabilize carbocation that is formed in SN1 reaction. So tertiary carbon favor SN1. Carbocation can be stabilized by resonance stabilization also. Leaving group on a benzylic or allylic position can stabilize the carbocation, which favors SN1. But what if we have a secondary substrate? Both SN2 and SN1 can happen. So we move into factor 2, nucleophile. As in SN2, both nucleophile and electrophile concentration is important. Moreover, nucleophile attack and leaving group exit happen at the same time. The strength of the nucleophile plays a significant role. Strong nucleophile favors SN2 and weak nucleophile disfavors SN2, which indirectly means weak nucleophile favors SN1, as SN1 has no dependence on the nucleophile, as we said earlier. Nucleophiles that have only lone pairs are weak. That of stable negative charge like halogen or resonance stabilized ions are moderate. And that of unstable negative charge like alkoxide ion are strong nucleophile. If we have a secondary and a moderate nucleophile, what should we do? Well, let's go to the third factor, leaving group. There are three types of leaving groups, excellent, good, and bad. Leaving groups with lone pairs are excellent, with stable charge or resonance stabilizing ability are good, and leaving groups with unstable charge are bad. Both SN2 and SN1 will need electrophile, that's for sure. And the excellent the leaving group is, the better reaction speed we'll achieve.
If we look at the trend, it shows similarities. But as SN1 needs more stability of the leaving group, because if you think, you will see the formation of the carbocation is the key moment in SN1 reaction. So the stable the leaving group will be, it can leave and form the carbocation easily. But from this factor alone, we cannot decide if a reaction will go by SN2 or SN1. With saying that, let's go to the factor number 4, which is solvent. We always need a polar solvent in nucleophilic substitution reaction because of the polar nature of electrophiles, nucleophiles, and the leaving groups. A protic solvent is a solvent where hydrogen atom is connected with an electronegative atom and can be pulled off of the compound easily, and the electronegative atom can stabilize itself. In contrast, but the hydrogen atom can be present, just not on the electronegative atom. Some common polar aprotic solvents are given here. Learn and practice. So polar aprotic solvents favor SN2. Why? Well, solvent creates a solvent shell around nucleophiles. When nucleophile is dissolved in the solvent, it's harder for a nucleophile to attack the electrophile by having an obstacle like this. Polar aprotic solvents are not good at creating solvent shell, and in SN2, the nucleophile is a factor to speed up the reaction rate. So whenever the nucleophile wants, it can go attack the electrophile. To summarize, we can sometimes decide if a reaction will follow SN2 or SN1 by seeing the first one or two factors, but we have to decide it by carefully charging all the factors. In most cases, the product of SN2 and SN1 are same, but the compounds having stereocenter will produce inverse and racemic product, which is a big deal in organic chemistry. So you have to be careful. Let's look at the example now. If you look at the compound, we'll see the electrophilic substrate is secondary. So we cannot exactly tell if it will follow SN1 or SN2. The nucleophile is moderate as it's a halogen ion. It doesn't tell much either. Then factor 3 is the leaving group. It's a good leaving group. It doesn't tell much either. Now the solvent is polar aprotic, which favors SN2. So SN2 wins in this case. That's all about SN2 and SN1 reactions today. I hope you guys have understood it properly. Go through your textbook and learn more. See you next time.